Welcome to my learning vlog. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I will gonna tackle about learning or thinking styles and multiple intelligences. You can see in the diagram, the student's diversity has two functions, which are the learning or thinking style and the multiple intelligences. There are two perspectives about learning or thinking styles, which are the sensory preferences and brain preferences are also known as global analytic continuum. There are three types of sensory preferences. First is visual learners. Second is auditory learners. Third is tactile and kinesthetic learners. In brain preferences, there are two brains function, which are the analytic in left and global in right brain. While in multiple intelligences, there are eight independent ways of processing information. Learning or thinking style Refer to the preferred way an individual process of information. They describe a person's typical mode of thinking, remembering, or problem solving. Furthermore, styles are usually considered to be bipolar or dimensions. There are two perspectives about learning or thinking style, which are the first is the sensory preferences, the second is the global analytic continuum. Sensory preferences. Individuals tend to gravitate toward or two types of sensory input and maintain a dominance in one of the following types. There are three types of sensory preferences, visual learners, auditory learners, and tactile or kinesthetic learners. Visual learners, these learners must see their teacher's action and facial expressions to fully understand the content of a lesson. Rich Hardy further breaks down visual learners into two, which are visual iconic and visual symbolic. Visual Iconic Those who prepare this form of input are more interested in visual imagery such as film, graphic, displays, or pictures in order to solidity learning. Visual Symbolic Those who prefer this form of input feel comfortable with abstract symbolism such as mathematics formulae of the written word. Now let's proceed to auditory learners. They learn best through verbal lectures, discussions, talking things through and listening to what others have to say. Auditory learners fall into two categories. First is the listeners and the second is the talkers. Listeners, this is the most common type. They are most likely to do well in school. They remember things said to them and make the information their own. Second is the talkers. They are the ones who prefer to talk and discuss. They often find themselves talking to those around them. The third sensory preferences is the tactile or kinesthetic learners. These learners or persons benefit much from a hands-on approach actively exploring the physical world around them. So, we are now in the global analytic continuum. Global style, linked to right hemisphere dominance in brain, takes information holistically, begins with understanding concepts first, with mastery of details to follow, prefer music or other background noise. Critic style, grounded in le left hemisphere dominance in brain, Take the information sequentially and step by step, preferring to learn a series of facts that lead towards an understanding of a larger concept. Requires orderly and quiet surroundings. Global learners may work better in groups than alone. Prefer to work multiple tasks at once. Sees big picture or overall view and likely to respond to a problem.
analytical learners preferring to study alone for long periods without interruption tend to work on one task to completion focuses on the parts that make up the big picture likely to respond to a problem with logic first instead of emotion solve problems systematically and logically that is all about the two perspective of learning or thinking styles now we proceed to the seven different main learning styles. Here are the seven different main learning styles. First is the visual or spatial learner. Second is the oral or auditory learner. Third is the verbal or linguistic learner. Fourth is the physical or kinesthetic learner. Fifth is the logical or mathematical learner. Sixth is the social or interpersonal learner. Seven is the solitary or the intrapersonal learner. Number one, visual or spatial learner. These learners are those who prefer learning by observing things using visual aids such as pictures, images, diagrams, and whiteboards. Help these learners understand information better. They easily visualize information, have a good sense of direction, and usually like to draw and doodle. Second is the oral or auditory learners. Sound and music appeal to these learners who typically have a good sense of rhythm. These learners are usually singers or musicians who are familiar with different instruments and the sounds they make. Oral learners are good listeners who normally learn best through verbal presentations like lectures and speeches. Visual. Third is the visual or linguistic learners. These learners prefer using words both in speech and writing. They can easily express themselves and usually love to read and write. Verbal learners tend to have a vast vocabulary and excel in activities that involve speaking, debating, and journalism. Fourth is physical or kinesthetic learners. Whether it's by using their body or hands, these learners are all about the sense of touch. Physical activities and sports play a big part in these students' lives. Getting hands-on is a must for these learners who love to tinker and learn best when they can do rather than see or hear. Number five is logical or mathematical learner. If there is logic, reasoning, and numbers involved, these learners are sure to excel. These students function and solve complex problems by employing strategies and a specific way of thinking. Computer programming, math, and science are usually favored by these types. Number six is social or interpersonal learners. Learning in groups and working with others is favored by the social learners. These students know how to communicate effectively and enjoy collaborating with others, brainstorming and discussing ideas and concepts. Social learners are generally good listeners who are thoughtful and understanding. The last learning style is solitary or intrapersonal learners. These students prefer to use self-study and work alone. They are independent, very self-aware, and on tune with their thoughts and feelings. These learners prefer being away from crowds and learn best in quiet place where they can focus on tasks at hand. So here are some examples of learning or thinking style activities. For visual, drawing maps, outlining processes, taking notes, watching videos, and reading silently through speeches. For auditory, listening to speeches or videos, reading out loud, and participating in group discussions. For tactile or kinesthetic, taking field trips, visiting museums, playing learning games, doing hands-on activities, and writing notes. Those are the activities that suits for the different learning or thinking styles. Now, let's proceed to multiple intelligences.
And in this part of lesson, I'm gonna tackle about Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. Many of us are familiar with three broad categories in which people learn, which are the visual learning, auditory learning, and kinesthetic learning. Beyond these three categories, many theories of an approaches toward human learning potential have been established. Among them is the theory of multiple intelligences developed by Howard Gardner, Ph.D., John H. and Elizabeth A. Hobbs, research professor of cognition and education at the Harvard Graduate School of Education at Harvard University. Gardner's early work in psychology and later in human cognition and human potential lead to his development of the initial six intelligences. Today, there are eight intelligences and the possibility of others may eventually expand the list. Gardner 2013 asserts that regardless of which subject you teach, the arts, the science, history, or math, you should present learning materials in multiple ways. Gardner goes on to point out that anything you are deeply familiar with you can describe and convey in several ways. We teachers discover that sometimes our own history of a topic is tenuous when the student tasks us to convey the knowledge. In another way, we are stumped. Thus, conveying information in multiple ways not only helps students learn the material, it also helps educators increase and reinforce our mystery of the content. Gardner's multiple intelligences theory can be used for curriculum, curriculum development, planning instruction, selection of course activities, and related assessment strategies. Gardner points out that everyone has strengths and weaknesses in various intelligences, which is why educators should decide how best to present course material given the subject matter and individual class of students. Indeed, instruction designed to help students learn material in multiple ways can trigger their confidence to, de to develop areas in which they are not as strong. In the end, students' learning is enhanced when instruction includes a range of meaningful and appropriate methods, activities, and assessments. Gardner himself asserts that educators should not follow one specific theory or educational innovation when designing instruction, but instead employ customized goals and values appropriate to teaching, subject matter, and student learning needs. Addressing the multiple intelligences can help instructors pluralize their instruction and methods of assessment and in enrich student learning. Psychologist Howard Gardner developed this theory in 1983. He claimed that people have eight independ independent ways of processing information, which are number one, verbal or li verbal linguistic or word smart, number two, logical, mathematical or logically smart, number three, Visual, spatial, or picture smart. Number four, auditory, musical, or music smart. Number five, bodily, kinesthetic, or body smart. Number six is interpersonal or people smart. Number seven is intrapersonal or self smart. Last is the naturalistic or nature smart. So here are the summaries of Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. First is verbal linguistic intelligence. Well-developed verbal skills and sensitivity to the sounds, meanings, and rhythm of words. Second is the logical, mathematical intelligence. Ability to think conceptually and abstractly, and capacity to discern logical and numerical patterns. Number three, spatial visual intelligence. 
capacity to change in images and pictures to visualize accurately and abstractly. Next is the bodily kinesthetic intelligence, ability to control one's movements and to handle objects skillfully. Number five is the musical intelligences, ability to produce and appreciate rhythm, pitch, and timbre. Number six is interpersonal intelligence, capacity to detect and respond appropriately to the moods, motivations, and desires of others. Number seven is the intrapersonal capacity Interpersonal, capacity to be self-aware and in tune with inner feelings, values, beliefs, and thinking processes. Last is the naturalist intelligence, ability to recognize plants, animals, and other objects in nature. That's all the topic all about.